So apparently in the middle of writing this, a new Chainsaw Man chapter came out and Twitter is trying to crucify this man. So let's see what happened, I guess. Uh-huh, okay, okay, okay. They're actually gonna go at it then. Holy shit, okay, okay. Nah, something's off. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> something's bad's gonna happen. Wait. Hey, yo, the fuck? Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Chainsaw Man used to be super, super f***ing horny. Fuck. And very, very disgusting. And it still is. Chainsaw Man used to be very beautiful and subtle. Its characters are some of the best the magazine has ever seen. Makima tucking me in bed has become my wet dream. And now my new wet dream is Aisa tugging. Tatsuki Fujimoto created a world that is unrivaled in its sheer spectrum. To the point where the more you read, the more chromosomes you receive. It was so revolutionary that Tatsuki Fujimoto single-handedly uplifted the human rights for all genders around the world. <sighs> The plot in Chainsaw Man wasn't the only heavy and uplifting thing, however, as every chapter and every character introduction was memorable. What makes all of this so good, however, is that everything was mind-numbingly retarded. As the story unfolded, your autism got weaponized to such an extent that you could start to make sense of all of this. I present to you the three life lessons. If you never want to stop appreciating life, become greedy. Pursue lust forever, you only live once, and stick in the crazy, no matter what. <laughs> Tatsuki Fujimoto had a legendary run in Shonen Jump that redefined what kids should be looking at. So a question arises, in the face of so much autism, what happened to Chainsaw Man? Did it really fall off? Because no one's really talking about it that much. Up until recently. Chainsaw Man up until this point was more irrelevant than it ever has ever since the anime dropped. So my question is, did Chainsaw Man really fall off? Did it really lose that magic it had in the beginning? The answer is... Meh. When I first picked up Chainsaw Man back at the end of 2020, the manga was nearly finished. After I read the first chapter, I was hooked, and then I proceeded to finish the whole manga in a single afternoon. Subsequently, I ended up developing five wit fantasies spread amongst these four characters. But then, the manga ended. The withdrawal symptoms were high, as I found out that a week from now, Chainsaw Man would end, and subsequently... Baba Boy. Right as I thought there was no hope for humanity, Tatsuki Fujimoto proceeded to announce the ending of the public safety arc as he moved from Shonen Jump to Manga Plus. Fujimoto put the manga on a near two-year hiatus, and whilst this did die down the hype, the community had plenty of memes to create and plenty of Rule 34 material to explore. Oh, man, I, oh, fuck. Despite all the degenerate material, which most likely already demonetized this video, Chainsaw Man's return was one of the most anticipated things in the manga world. Only for it to be forgotten in like, like what, five months? Like, no one started caring about it. Because this shit was a ASS! This was so slow, no one expected some goofy ass slow stuff, we wanted more autism! <laughs> Craziest shit that happened in Chainsaw Man Part 1 was a five sum, and then in Part 2 it's like, an awkward kissing! Which soon got overwritten. But we'll get to that. To say Chainsaw Man Part 2 was a massive shift away from the <clears throat> acoustic nature of Part 1 would be a massive understatement. One of my viewers said this best. Part 2 is relatively normal. It is as if Fujimoto healed during his break. A few days ago I decided to reread all of Part 1 and 2 in order to diagnose if Chainsaw Man really fell off. Welcome to Watch Mojo, because the following discoveries will shock you. One of the main reasons why I believe people started to dislike or distance themselves from Part 2 was because of our own consumption of the story. When I reread Part 2, I genuinely did not want to talk about the manga being bad. I was worried that at some point, the plot, the characters, the execution of various thought crimes would become stale. But much to my surprise, it didn't. When it comes to Fujimoto's comedy, when it comes to his autism, it's 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 still going strong. My favorite part, up until the recent chapter, was the United States joke and the, and the culture war. Everything is still autistic. To sum up the plot, it's about the least cancerous day in Dream SMP, when Dream Stance sprout chainsaws out of their foreheads to clash against the Jayshlet community. This event was later known as the Minor Cutters. After I reread part 1, the source of my self-inflicted gaslighting became obvious. The problem was never with Chainsaw Man, but rather 
with us. A large majority of us experience Chainsaw Man as a one massive binge rather than a weekly publication. Tatsuki Fujimoto's tale of revolutionary presentations of promiscuous bitches got a lot of hype towards the end of its run, and when the trailer for Chainsaw Man's anime adaptation released, that just added more fuel to the fire. A bunch of people just migrated towards the manga, and since there was already 90 chapters of material ready to read, people just went full degen. This skewered a lot of people's perception of the story, cause pacing, which is vital for us Chinese spyware connoisseurs, wasn't paid that much attention. Who gave a shit if 19 pages were dedicated to Denji groping Power's boobs? If anything, it should've been his own arc. The pace was further magnified by part 1's story, which in and of itself was very, very fast. Boom! Action! Boom! Boobs! Boom! Boobs! Boom! the depression B -b -b Chainsaw Man used to be the TikTok equivalent of manga. Once a bit was over, we would just scroll through constantly, constantly and constantly until we got depressed. Chainsaw Man Part 1 had the luxury of being able to afford mistakes or not progressing the plot to some extent because Tatsuki Fujimoto could just replace it with some funny autism or sex. But Part 2 in every sense is a slower, less action-heavy manga. Thus, more things fringe upon its dialoguing characters. Just think about how many iconic moments we had in Part 2. One. Think about how many of these moments are so many people's wallpapers, or so many people's inspiration for other things. Same things do not exist in part 2. There is no similar imagery, or there's no similar action sequences that really engage you. It focuses more on the characters, and for the longest time, the characters are just kinda f ass in the manga. Like, Aisa was really not that interesting, because that one plot point she had about potentially killing someone to get a proper weapon was thrown out the fucking window. A similar thing happened with other characters, like we didn't get that much development and some of the best characters in part 2 are characters that transferred from part 1. Whether that be this tentacle guy or Kobeni's younger brother who's just Kobeni but less funny. Which equals the funniest character in part 2. The tug of war duo are obviously an exception to this rule, but I do believe that a lot of characters in part 2 cannot even come close to the quality of writing in part 1. On top of all of that, the entire plot point of following Denji's normal school life kinda just became stale after a little bit. What made this even worse is the bi-weekly schedule. We had to wait so long for Denji to appear in the story again cause we followed Aisa. We followed Isis' bizarre adventures with the Justice Devil, and then this random bitch just dies all of a sudden. We didn't really get to see a lot of characters develop over time. A character that frequently appears is Fami, but Fami is a cardboard cutout of a human being. She has no personality. I never thought I'd say this, but Tatsuki Fujimoto fell into that dead inside female anime character trope. It's actually just insane. She has nothing personality wise. What made all of this even worse was the actual release schedule of Chainsaw Man Part 2, because it's it was bi-weekly, and since not a lot happened, we had to wait so long for a culmination of some side quests to actually lead to something. Like, we had so many of these jokes that really didn't hit as hard as part 1, only for the chapter to end and for us to wait another who knows how long for the next chapter. When I was binging the manga, it was not an issue, but as a bi-weekly read, I can see why a lot of people felt frustrated with Chainsaw Man Part 2. And if we want to get into the numbers, the average chapter in Part 1 was around 19 pages long, the average chapter now, despite being bi-weekly, is somewhere around 20 to 25 page mark. Since Manga Plus is far more flexible, Tatsuki Fujimoto could severely lower the page count or lower his release schedule, thus you could get sometimes severely unlucky like with chapter 161, where we only get like 15 pages and two things happen, we get a pretty funny dick joke, the character's going to Denji's cell and Kwangxi appears. That's it, nothing more happens, she doesn't even say a word, that, that's where the chapter ends. So I think you start to see the issue here. Fujimoto made everything slower, whilst removing all the brain rot. The community response started to heal their lobotomized brains, and obviously, they didn't want that to happen. This was when I realized that Chainsaw Man Part 2, as a binge read, is fucking amazing. If you improve the pace by being able to binge it, all the bright sides of Chainsaw Man start to appear again. Fujimoto's comedy encompassed many varieties, whether that be simple shit like this, or complex build-up to school sh punchlines, reaction illustrations like this, which I use to piss off my friends constantly, or the or the Evangelion reference. Best way I can describe it is Chainsaw Man no longer suffered from autism, but rather it simply has it. Chainsaw Man Part 2 is an amazing read, but admittedly too slow. But then two things clicked. I started to realize the structure of Chainsaw Man Part 2. 
There is one more reason as to why Chainsaw Man Part 2 doesn't seem as appetizing for the average lobotomized Chainsaw Man fan. If Chainsaw Man Part 1 was always doping us with small amounts of dopamine, then Chainsaw Man Part 2 is getting ready to give us a whole bottle of fentanyl. The previous 40 or so chapters of Chainsaw Man Part 2 were specifically intended for build-up, which are now being paid off. So many different things were needed to establish in the previous chapters, such as Denji and Aisa's growing relationship, giving a proper reason as to why Aisa just becomes super fucking OP, the slow imminent arrival to Death Devil, and most importantly, it was a build-up to Denji's own feelings. Up until this point, Denji always wanted to be a normal high school kid, but now that he finally has it, he feels conflicted. He wants to be Chainsaw Man as well, but if he wants to be Chainsaw Man, he cannot have a normal life. And that, I feel like, is a really, really good payoff to all this build-up. He gets to have what he wanted for most of his life, but he is still unhappy. Now, Aisa chumming into his life to such a degree will add a further depth to his character and make the story far more complex. Whilst I do believe that the first 40 or so chapters of Chainsaw Man Part 2 were just kinda meh, I do feel like it is not because of a skill issue on Tatsuki Fujimoto's part, but rather it was done out of necessity for the plot. Everything that's gonna come after this point will be all the more better. Moral of the story, a lot of the criticism directed towards Chainsaw Man Part 2 is made of Chainsaw Man fans who are just addicted to fentanyl. Simple as that.